to finish the year before uh, doing a little bit uh, a follow up of the of the youth leadership encounter. We have a lot of of weeks of work. Uh, we met we met in Geneva. We celebrate our 70th anniversary last 20th of November. So I've been with, with a lot of work. I couldn't send all the schedule for all the schools, but I try to work with the schools that we are finishing the year, the academic year now in, in December, the, the Southern Hemisphere. So the idea is a little bit to do a follow up of, of what was the Youth Leadership Encounter and, and all that inspirational speakers and talks that we had. And that's why I uh, ask very kindly for Christina that she says yes from Eco Schools, just to give a little bit follow up and a little bit about uh, a, a little ideas about the projects and how we can think about them. And then we are going to um, to move forward to uh, some ideas that the schools from Argentina, from the site Belgrano and Tortuguitas, are thinking about in order to start planning their projects to start in March. What we are going to do in, in January and February to continue working with the schools in Europe and, and, and other parts of the world and try to see what they are doing, what they are presenting. We, are, we have also been working on the schedule for um, the presential meeting next year. It would probably be on the 13th of November, but we will get back to you on that and, and working on the budget and on the, on the cultural activities that we would do and uh, the speakers, the, the sponsors and all the, the, um, the logistics that we are going to have a, a monthly meeting with the West Nottingham Academy to look for the also for the places where you're going to sleep with the kids and everything. So we are working a lot on that. I think it's our main um, our main activity for next year. That's why we are thinking a year in advance. And I, I'm not I, I don't want to to keep Christina waiting and I will give the floor to her and to thank her in, in this very short notice, but just to give like a closing of the academic year, at least in the southern hemisphere. And, and to do a follow-up after our meeting in October. And the, the idea is to continue meeting every month with different speakers and different schools, and maybe a, a inspirational speaker, so at least um, companies or, or people who are working in, in, in climate justice, someone from COP26 that was a huge inspiration that happened in November also. We, we, we have been following that and, and try to do this kind of of one hour, 45 minutes uh, webinars with, with a speaker and also the schools to report how we are um, we are uh, advancing in, in, in their project. So thank you, Christina, and I give the floor to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Gardo. Thank you for uh, for having me again. Uh, I mean, if some of you uh, participated in the youth uh, uh, leadership encounter, you you probably recognize some of my slides, uh, but this is really just to um, uh, yeah, to remind you of, of how you can actually plan your projects for the next year and uh, what's uh, important to remember in this process. Um, but I'll share some slides from my end. Oh no, Edgardo, if you are still around, I can see I'm not able to share my screen. No. Yes, of course, Jorge okay. will allow you in a second. Okay, thanks. Well, while we wait, uh, I can just mention that uh, yeah, my name is Christina Matson. I uh, work at Foundation for Environmental Education, uh, which is uh, based in Copenhagen in Denmark. It's very dark here. Winter is coming, um, but uh, looking forward to some holidays soon coming up. And uh, yeah, I work mainly with the Eco Schools program here at uh, at the organization. Um, and basically the Eco Schools program run through a seven step methodology uh, that is uh, useful for schools who want to uh, engage within environmental uh, projects and want to make a difference, a positive difference within their school and local community. But yeah, I'd like to show you some slides, so I'll just wait patiently until I get there. <laughs> Can you check now, please, Christina? Yeah, it still says only meeting organizers and presenters can share. Okay, one second. Sorry about that. 
That's okay. All right, yes, now it seems like I am able to share my screen. Great. Oh. <laughs> Give me one second. We can see now. Hey, yes, I'm just unsure if you will be able to see when I change the slide, but let me just uh, try. Did the slide change? Uh, no, not yet. No, OK, let me just try again. Now. <laughs> I, I think I, ch I, I changed the slide. So I, I can I can work with you. Oh, you changed the slide. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, sorry, on mine it's still is. Oh, okay. Now it changed. <laughs> All right. Well, we can we can try it like this and see if that goes. Is that okay, Edgardo? Yes, of course. All right. Super. Um. Well, I don't have so much time as I did last time, so I'll try to keep be as brief as possible. Basically, as I mentioned, my name is Christina. I work for Foundation for Environmental Education, um, and you may change the slide, Edgardo. <laughs> oh, I can do it myself. Great. I'll do it this way then. Um, so basically, uh, FEE is a non-profit, non-governmental organization, um, and it's a, yeah, it's an umbrella organization, meaning that we have 100 members in different countries around the world who are uh, the ones who run the programs on uh, on a national level in these different countries. And EcoSchools is one out of five main countries that we uh, five main uh, programs, sorry, that we run through um, through FEE. Uh, so about the Eco Schools program, um, it's a, uh, the largest environmental education school program uh, in the world. It's run by our member organizations in 72 countries uh, and reaching millions of students and teachers um, around the world. We also work with, directly with international schools uh, in countries where we do not have a fee member organization. Uh, so that could maybe something be something for you if you're not already part of the Eco Schools program. Um, this is a map of where we are represented through both our member organizations and through uh, international schools. Um, and I'm going a little bit fast. I think, um, Edgardo, uh, I'll send you the PDF uh, later of this presentation so you can have a read through it because I know there are some slides with a lot of information, but I'll, I'm trying to keep it as brief as possible. Uh, so basically, Perfect. the Eco Schools program uh, is an is a program for schools um, that looks at sustainability issues, uh, trying to uh, improve the environmental footprint of the school itself, but also uh, the local community. And that is really done through this uh, seven step uh, methodology that we use. And some of you might think uh, I'm going to go through each of the of the seven steps um, and try to explain how you can use this uh, to plan and, and organize your own projects. Um, but I, what I want to really highlight is that each of these steps actually ha has served an important function. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do it exactly in these steps. Um, like um, you might do this, for example, the sixth step of informing and involving um, at the beginning and and uh, throughout the, the process. Um, but it's it's really um, some th steps that you can take into account uh, when uh, when organizing your your projects. Um, and I mean, question is, oh, that looks a little bit complicated. Why should we go through all of these steps? And basically, it is because 
hopefully with your projects, you will start to create some kind of, um, well, you want to achieve a long lasting and widespread positive impact. So how do we do that? How do we ensure that this is not a one-off event, for example, that doesn't really create a change uh, in the long term? Um, because changing uh, behaviors uh, of ourselves within the school, within our local community, uh, changing the norms and the culture, um, the way that we do things, um, that takes time to change. So we need to try to, so we also need to tackle these issues in a, in a, um, yeah, in a deliberate way. And I really want to emphasize that as a school, you have a fantastic opportunity because you already have a group of people, uh, both students and school staff and teachers and management um, that can come together and really uh, make this a success and kind of uh, become a, a, a role model within the community that you uh, that you are part of. Uh, over here. Um, so basically, uh, Maybe you have already done so. Maybe you already have a group. We call it an eco committee, and in eco schools, um, a, basically a group that is uh, taking charge, that is organizing the project, that is planning it out. Um, and we recommend that this is, this group has a lot of diversity in it. So there could be uh, members of, of students and teachers, but also uh, non-teaching staff such as canteen workers or uh, the the person who cleans the school, it could be parents or members of the board of the management. So really to have a diverse set of uh, people who can come with uh, ideas and help and uh, help make this uh, project a success. In general, we also recommend that that um, that there's a majority of students and really um, to try to make this group uh, as student led as possible. And I know this can sometimes be uh, difficult because as a teacher, perhaps you want to drive the, the project forward and you, you have all these great ideas that you want the students to come on board with. But if you can maybe take one step uh, behind and try to facilitate um, the yeah, development of the projects and the, and the group meetings, but trying to really give the students uh, a voice and a, an a active role in actually organizing the whole thing. Yeah, that's really important. Um, and basically this group is uh, there to meet regularly and kind of follow up on, on the project that you're doing, uh, but it's also important that they inform and keep uh, like activating the whole school, uh, who's not necessarily part of the group, but who, um, yeah, who wants to also want to benefit from the project. And I'll, I'll give some examples of how you can actually, of where in, in this uh, seven step methodology that you can reach out to, to other members, uh, to other students and teachers who are not part of this group per se. Um, so through the, the Eco School seven step, uh, the second step would be to carry out a sustainability audit. And that's really uh, looking at a range of different themes uh, within the school community in order to be able to find out, OK, where exactly are we actually, where are we doing well in terms of sustainability and where could we improve? Um, I'm going to just skip to the next slide just so you have some idea of what these themes could look could look like. Sorry. Uh, so there's energy and transport and food and litter and all these uh, different themes that where your school might already be doing some things, but there might also be things where you uh, or themes where you are not. Um, uh, yeah. Um, whether, whether it could be improved, basically. Um, if I go back one side. So the idea is of doing the sustainability audit is to get an overview. It's to get an, uh, an idea of, OK, where should we start? What theme should we focus on? What's important for our school? And you could do this through surveys and interviews and observations and measurements within the school. Um, basically, because that will also um, already uh, make you involve the wider school community. So if you do, a, for example, a survey about, OK, uh, what is important for you in, or in terms of sustainability within the school? What would you like to see that we focus on as a school with, um, and try to develop and improve through our project? In that way, the school is already 
well, they know that you're actually working on this project and that they feel heard and that they know something is coming and that, uh, you know, um, uh, that it doesn't mm, come as a surprise once you have once you start implementing some of these actions, basically. Um, and as it, as it says here, it will inform your uh, action plan. So basically trying to pinpoint spe the specific theme that you would like to, um, to work on. The linking to cur the cur curriculum is, is also quite uh, important, but depending on um, yeah, the, the time that you have, uh, this is also one of the more advanced steps. Um, but basically, if you decided to work on the theme of biodiversity, for example, um, and you wanted to make sure or you wanted to plant some uh, uh, local uh, plants in your uh, school garden or your, uh, yeah, as part of your school outdoor area, um, how could you then in biology, for example, or in geography, all the classes that you normally teach, how could you actually use some of these uh, plants that you're planting or the activity that you're doing as part of this project within the, the, um, the classes that you're already teaching? So try to not necessarily see the project as an as a extracurricular thing, but one that's actually embedded within uh, your uh, teaching already. Again, uh, if this is ideally and if uh, and hopefully one day uh, that will be possible. Um, step four is is really the action plan. That's really where your project starts to form. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, in your case, I would recommend that you uh, focus on on one main theme because uh, sometimes um, we get really excited and we want to. Uh, do a lot of things in a lot of different areas. Uh, we want to plant trees, we want to make sure that there's uh, no single-use plastics around, we want to make sure that uh, that everyone recycles well, that we eat vegetarian, like, and this is all great, but I would recommend that you actually choose uh, and uh, fo to focus a little bit, to choose one theme, um, and then really develop that theme in, a, in as many creative ways as possible. Um, so uh, let me just see what it says here. Yeah, um, and you might think, okay, how do we do that? <laughs> well, um, if you, for example, chose the theme of, uh, let's say food, and um, well, already there, there's a lot of sub actions that you could take depending on uh, what, your, what the situation is in your school. But let's say you have a canteen, uh, so you can, um, the Eco Committee could sit together with the canteen staff and the school management to figure out, okay, can we maybe swap some of the meat-based uh, meals that we serve with vegetarian ones? How do we make the vegetarian options attractive? How do we make students actually want to eat these? Like, it can't be just a, a carrot and a celery stick. That's, that's just, uh, it has to be... Um, yeah, a little bit more creative and something that looks delicious. Um, in this discussion with the with the canteen, you could also figure out, okay, is there ways that we can avoid that we have food waste? Is there a way that we can avoid single-use plastics? Uh, maybe a lot of the ingredients that are bought for uh, for the canteen or like the food products come wrapped in plastics. Um, or maybe they are also... Um, yeah, maybe you could look at where they come from. Are they locally uh, produced these vegetables, um, or are do they are they shipped from far away? Um, on top of that, you could, for example, do a lot of posters uh, about what you're trying to do in the canteen. So when people and the students go there, uh, they understand. Okay, something new, something new is happening. Why are we doing this? Why it's important? Um, what are the benefits of, for example, eating less meat in terms of climate action? Um, you could have a day where you invite parents over, um, where they help cook some of these uh, meals and figure out, oh, this is actually delicious and it's not so hard as I thought. So ideally, um, okay, last thing, you could also make a field trip to a local farmer. So there's 
so just within the theme of food, there are so many things that you could do. So um, don't think that you need to cover the whole um, umbrella of, of themes uh, that we at least uh, have in uh, through EcoSchools. All right, step five, uh, that's monitoring and evaluating. And really that's important uh, because you would like to know, okay, uh, we've done all these uh, projects, we've done all these actions. Well, did we actually, what did we actually achieve? Did, did the targets that we set, did we meet them? And if we didn't, what can we change in order for us to uh, improve it? Um, and if we if we did meet them, well, then we need new targets to become even better because this is a process that goes uh, over and over again, and we can always um, become better um, and make our projects more relevant and more uh, engaging. Um, and again, this is a place where you can uh, where you should really uh, also uh, share the, the findings that you find. So maybe you found out, okay, uh, this poster or um, what can we say? Uh, uh, we didn't actually manage to um, to make students and teachers eat the vegetarian options. Okay, well then you okay then you can actually be honest about that and do these posters and explain at the assembly hall. Okay, we tried this. And then you can figure out, OK, is there any way or like, could you get any suggestions from the wider school? Like, why is it that you're not eating these uh, particular meals uh, apart from something else? So it's a really chance to to learn from what you did uh, and adjust along the way. Um, in terms of inform and involve, that's one of the, the steps that I would say is uh, cross-cutting in the sense that this happens from the very beginning, that you begin your project and uh, and get to the end. Uh, so basically to to keep uh, to keep reminding yourself that it's not only a small group, the small project group who is uh, organizing the whole thing that needs to know what you're doing. Basically, the whole school needs to know that you're planning this and that you're um, that what you are. Yeah, what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, and there's a lot listed a lot of different ways of uh, communication. Uh, yeah, uh, tools that you could use here on this slide um, in case you want to have a look at that. Uh, but basically uh, think of the school as a whole, but also as, uh, of parents, um, of siblings who are not part of the school, of the, yeah, the community members who are uh, within your town or your city. And uh, the last step, um, at least uh, in eco schools, is is to produce an eco code. And basically, that's um, um, a, what do you call it? Um, well, it 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 is a it's a way to list uh, the main objectives of your action plan. Okay, so what it is as a school that we want to achieve, um, and make this kind of in a prominent and memorable way. So it could be a poem, it could be a, a drawing, a model, a song, something that is uh, that you can remember. And basically, remember, it's it's can be a way to help slightly uh, adjust or improve the the culture of the school. So maybe there hasn't really before this project been any environmental initiatives in the same way. So we want to kind of start creating a culture around this and making it, uh, the project something that the, the whole school can identify with and understand, OK, why is this important and why are we doing this? And maybe come together as a school community to uh, to help and achieve these uh, these goals that are. Yeah. Um, provided. All right, um, I wanted to just highlight a few key things uh, that I think you could keep in mind uh, while you um, yeah, design and organize your projects. But again, it's one that I mentioned before that it's really important that to the widest extent possible to have students lead the projects. And that's really because it gives them some uh, sort of uh, ownership over it and some responsibility. And uh, I guess, yeah, um, even though there might 
become a little more, it might take a little bit longer or there might come some um, uh, some challenges along the way. These are also really good learning opportunities for the students. And I think that's actually the last point uh, that I put here. Remember that the projects as a learning opportunity. So while you do research on your topic, while you um, make the whole project, the whole, the whole process, you actually have the chance to learn about collaboration. You have the chance to learn about, uh, yeah, from experts on this topic. Uh, there's a lot of places where you can actually uh, learn skills um, that are not necessarily the end as part of the end project. Um, as I mentioned before, I would also recommend that you, yeah, really try to focus on one theme and really go into, into depth with that. Um, and then I also put in number three, uh, try to solve issues upstream rather than downstream. And with that, I mean, um, well, I want to take the example of, of litter cleanups, which are really popular and are, of course, really um, important because we really don't want waste and litter to be out there in our nature. Um, but maybe as an addition to that activity, um, you could try to look at solving the issue upstream. So basically, how do we avoid creating litter waste in the first place? Um, and one of the, the most, um, I would say, um, efficient ways is really to look at uh, single use. So are we using any single use plastics at our school uh, or single use items at all? And if we do, how do we, uh, yeah, how do we replace that with something that can be used multiple times? And that can actually be difficult because then it might require cleaning and it might it might become a little bit more hasslesome. So again, you need to be a little bit creative in terms of mm, what, what are the alternatives and how do we present it? Because we don't want to take away all of the single use plastic cups if there are if there's no alternative because we still want to drink water. Um, so Yes. Um, yeah, that, I think that's what I wanted to <laughs> highlight in this one. Um, and as I mentioned before, a lot of it is about behavior and it is about habits. Like we've done something for many years and, and this can actually be quite difficult to change. Uh, but if your project somehow can push it in a, in a direction uh, that is more positive, that is more environmentally friendly, that's already a great start. Um, don't imagine that you'll be able to change everyone uh, overnight. It, it does take uh, time. Um, and I've listed actually two uh, publications here that you might find um, useful. Uh, one of them is called Positive Actions for the SDGs, and it lists uh, a number of very concrete um, ways that you can actually, um, uh, yeah, mm, uh, well, how do I say this? It has uh, learning objectives that are behavior based. So uh, for each of the SDGs, there are a set of um, behavioral outcomes that are uh, that you can get inspired by. And so, for example, in S um, let me just see if I can pull that up. In terms of SDG one, uh, you can, uh, which is uh, no poverty. Um, the actions that are listed here are, for example, um, uh, purchases uh, or influence purchases of fair, uh, fair trade products and services, uh, shows empathy, empathy to the poor uh, and is aware of the role of decisions that uh, exaggerate uh, poverty, protests inequality, etc. So it's a list of, of things where you can actually, um, if you're a little bit unsure, like how can I actually contribute to the different SDGs? Uh, these are uh, some specific actions that you can um, that you can look at, uh, and the little little book of green nudges is uh, developed by uh, UNEP, um, and it's actually uh, targeted mainly uh, universities. But I think it's actually really good because it it has some good ideas for how you can nudge people's behavior. So how do we do you positively influence um, people? Uh, in a way without being uh, condescendent or without being uh, negative, saying you shouldn't do that and that. It takes a more positive spin on it. And it has some really nice um, yeah, ideas for, for how to do that. 
Um, again, uh, remember to yeah to really include uh, the whole school as much as possible, um, and uh, even community members in the projects that you make, and keep it keep it fun and creative and social in the sense that sometimes when we deal with these sustainability projects, we yeah we become a little bit uh, you shouldn't do that you shouldn't do that. But if we can turn it around and say you should do this and this is actually nice we are working on this together and it, we will have a bigger positive impact if we actually collaborate and we do this um, as a whole school um, then yeah then we are a, a long way already i think that is uh, what i wanted to say uh, today, I know we have a school presentation as well, as well so I don't want to take up uh, more time. But uh, thank you so much for, for listening. And um, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very, very, very much, Christina. Uh, I would like to give the floor to the students of St. Catherine's Moorlands for them to, to speak about their ideas, what they have been planning, and 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 uh i don't know why we have this oh. presentation here um yes i'm trying to oh here i stop it and and try to see what they were thinking and, and their inspirations and 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 that's why i will give the floor to the students thank you christine it was very uh, pedagogic and, and 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 really simple how to follow the steps and and which are the the shortcuts that we should think when we are doing a project. Also, we have here in Argentina two sites. It's not the same as school in the city center where the spaces are reduced and it's a more like a city school and a school in the more in the countryside where there is a space and more space to do a lot of, 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 of sustainable things. We can do sustainable things and projects in every school, depending on our community and our, and our places and our spaces. But that's why I will give the floor to the students. So Guadalupe or, or, or I don't know who is going to speak, you have the floor. Yes, um, we have like two venues in our school. So we decided to do a, a project, the two of us, like we joined to do the same project. And we have like some ideas. Uh, we discovered that there are different projects we are doing in our school thought about improving the following products and create new ones. For example, students will recycle paper and then will use to create awareness about sustainability. We do um, plastify to make compost. No, plastify, we also make compost. We collect the batteries and we also will be the orchard, uh, an electronic orchard with Benjamin Fauda and he will f help us through tutorials. Also, we make art with garbage in the art classes, and we also raise awareness in all the community through posture videos, and these videos will be posted uh, in handing. There's a platform for the parents, and we will speak in different classes. That's great. Many thanks. I, I don't know if someone is going to follow that. Or... Yes, actually, um, about and we also wanted to mention about the actual, you could say, proposals and how they're going to spread around the school. That's something that you talked about, Christina. Um, we did decide to make it more student led. We did realize that it was probably going to become more popular and students were going to be more intrigued if it was their actual classmates spreading the project instead of their teachers, maybe because they would find it as an obligation or something else that they didn't really want to do. And there are also some other projects that kind of advertise themselves, like what I mentioned, we have two. One is the recycled paper project where well, we make posters out of recycled paper that we're going to recycle ourselves. And also another one that we're proposing to the head of the school and the art teachers, which is making art with things that would normally go in the trash bin. So of course everything is cleaned and then the idea would be to include in the art class that project and then 
everything would be hanged up around the school. Once again, it's kind of advertising itself. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, someone is going to follow that, or Christina, you or I don't know if the students want to keep talking, or Christina have an advice or something. Well, I'm, I'm just glad to hear that uh, that you uh, brought in some some more students for for organizing that project. That's uh, that's excellent. Um, it's yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll I'll think about if I can uh, give some uh, sound advice uh, if uh, yeah later on. Great. I think Josefina wanted to speak, right? Um. Yes. Actually, for the art project. Uh, we will make big canvases or something similar made out of recycled paper, linking it to the art project. This would be produced by the students from each class with a previous explanation from a video or the person in charge. After the canvas is finished, the class will create a drawing connected to climate change, ca uh, climate justice, uh, using garbage from their homes or from the school. Then they will be presented in in the school somewhere we have space right thank you josefina i don't know Abu, Abus or laura is if someone else should speak from the students no that's fine those are the the ideas we've been working with so far um, our students have i mean they have plenty of ideas so now we need to, to make sure that those ideas uh, can actually become real projects. Uh, and for that, we still have to, to involve the community and we have got to do some, some research depending on the possibilities that each venue has. Because as Edgardo said, we have two venues which are very similar in some aspects, but their location makes them quite different at the same time. So we would like to, to, to be able to, to, to do a project that allows them to, well, to participate, to, to have one same project for the whole school, for both venues, but that at the same time they respect the possibilities and the, and the culture that each venue has. So we were still deciding and we are designing that project. Uh, unfortunately, we're starting our holidays summer holidays. So um, well, we are happy with what we've done so far, and we're going to keep on working as from probably March ne next year. Okay, yes. Uh, fortunately, we're starting. <laughs> right, fortunately. Thank you. Thank you, Agustina and Laura. Christina, you have something? Oh, sorry. I didn't... Yes, go ahead, Laura. You you got frozen. Ah, I was frozen. Okay. Um, I don't see. I don't know why. The, I I don't see anyone. The cameras are off for me. Maybe it's my computer. But the idea is that the, it's it's a good opportunity to build a sense of community between both venues. I it's good that they have created a WhatsApp group. The the ideas come from students, and as we said, um, inform and involve. Uh, Step six, the idea is that many things are going on at school already. There are botellas de amor to recycle. The one use plastics, they do some kind of bottles, um, and there is a lot of participation, but we haven't involved everyone in the community yet. So the idea is to create these videos to involve parents, to involve the whole community that will be posted, of course, in on hunting that is a school platform and then on instagram probably and we still have to work on the echo code that is also nice if we create it between both venues but we still have a lot of work to do as austina said so well thank you thanks i mean i i did come up with maybe a suggestion that you could uh, maybe consider um when you're doing these um, art projects out of the waste, perhaps you could in that in the same um, 
process, also count or take a little bit notice of what waste are you actually finding uh, are produced the most? Uh, so is it, uh, yeah, I don't know what it could be, <laughs> but try to uh, separate it and actually um, figure out what are, what is the type of waste that we produce the most of. Um, even if you're able to weigh it so you have some kind of scale, that would be nice because if you would then do your project and do this um, awareness raising campaign about uh, both that we should recycle and that we can use waste uh, in a in a way and not just throw it away. But as I mentioned in my presentation, can you also uh, highlight the um, the aim of reducing waste in the first place? And it would be nice if you can actually see uh, physically that that pile of waste that you had in the beginning that you worked with became smaller um, after you've done this uh, campaign. Um, and go into a discussion about why is it actually very difficult to reduce that amount. <laughs> um, but uh, I think that discussion is uh, is important and uh, and will help kind of support uh, support what you're trying to do. Thank you, thank you, Christina, for your. Thank you. Yes, we'll take them into consideration for sure. Great idea about measuring or weighting or sort of, um, I mean, in order to create awareness, it's very important for us to be able to to inform the community and therefore to notice what kind of waste we are producing. So that's a wonderful idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christina, for your advice. Thank the teachers, Agustina, Laura, and other teachers. I, I'm seeing Virginia from Uruguay. I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing teachers from also from Istanbul and from different parts of the world. The idea is to get together every month, try to speak on about Sorry, different Gallo, it, Yes, it, yes, it, Virginia. Yes. I'm, I wanted to apologize for our students not being able to participate today. You know that we had a, a COVID uh, breakout uh, last week and they, they suddenly found themselves back into a lockdown. It was it has been very difficult for us to end the year, but and nevertheless, I wanted to tell you that we have been working with them uh, in biology, especially in biology uh, with compost and, you know, recycling all the materials produced at school at campus. And there is another project going on in the other venue. We have a senior venue. Uh, bachillerato, and they are working in recycling plastic bottles to produce surfing boards. So we are trying to get together to see how to uh, continue these projects in a more um, effective way. But the students are trying because they are really involved in that and they have, uh, you know, the, the, this is a summer resort and everybody likes surfing and they are so enthusiastic about uh, producing material, recycling all the material that um, that uh, they will be needing for the, to produce new surfing boards. So um, we have to find out a little bit more about it, about the process. But we know that the seniors are doing that. So I think that uh, all the committee is very interested in, you know, uh, adding up, um, joining in and uh, spreading a little bit more the, the project. So. Uh, we are looking forward to that, and as uh, the other teachers said, well, here in the southern hemisphere, we are uh, beginning our summer holidays in the middle of this COVID, COVID outbreak, so it's kind of difficult, uh, but well, we hope to begin classes in March, around the 8th of March, uh, hopefully presential, but we do, really don't know how the tourism will affect our country uh, uh, so we can't tell you, but we'll keep in touch virtually with our students and try, try to promote the, the project, of course. Thank you so much May, for both of you, for your insights. It has been very nice listening to them and to all St. Catherine Morelands, which is a very uh, a close friend of ours. So thank you and really impressed of how much you have achieved so far. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. And uh, well, the idea is this, is to get together and try to 
I wanted to close the year before we go into our holidays or we'll try to go into our holidays with this COVID situation that it's complicated in Europe, in, in South America and in different parts of the world. In one part because it's cold, in other parts because it's hot. So yes. the idea is to try to see how we are advancing and to have a, a, a meeting every every month and and know each other and see what we are doing, try to get feedback or to see, I have this problem, maybe you can try this, right. and to see each other uh, in November next year, presentially, and try to, 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 to be a, a working team and trying to, with, with, the, with the boost of the COP26, that I think it was very inspiring yes. in Glasgow last November, to continue with this. And also I want to thank especially Christina, that is our partner in Echo Schools, that she's always available. She's very clear. She's a, a great professional. And I think for the students and for us, it's a, a great insight that an she asset. is able to be, yeah, an asset that she's able to be here with us. So thank you very much. And we will see each other in January. The ones who are on holidays, happy holidays. We will see with the Euro Operation um, schools. Uh, uh, or the schools that are following the Northern uh, calendar from September to June. So thank you very much. And let's see if we can see each other uh, very soon. Thank you and stay safe. Yeah. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too. Thank Happy you. holidays. Thank you. Bye. Bye.